let us discuss gauss seidel or gauss jacobi iterative method for solving a set of linear homogeneous system let us assume the set to be like this where you denote a as a square matrix aij of order n and similarly x is a column matrix of n unknowns while b is the coefficient matrix of n unknown so this is the standard formalism of n number of equations to solve out of n simultaneous linear equations so gauss seidel and gauss jacobi both are iterative methods in a sense that we <coughs> approximately assume an initial solution which we develop by repeating repetitively putting the value of the initial approximation in the set of equations let us first write the n equations in n unknown in descriptive format the first one equation we may write it as a11 x1 a12 x2 a13 x3 dot 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 a1 n xn is equal to b1 remember that this can be represented as summation a1 j xj is equal to b1 where j runs from 1 to n isn't it so this can be represented like this the second one is obviously a21 x1 a22 x2 a23 x3 plus dot 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 a2n xn equal to b2 which can similarly be represented as a2jxj equal to b2 and j runs from again 1 to n see a21x1 22x2 23x3 and then to an xn similarly we have a31x1 a32x2 a33x3 plus dot 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 a3nxn equal to b3 which may again be represented as a3jxj equal to b3 where j runs from 1 to n and so on while the last one may be represented as a n1 a n2 a n1 x1 plus a n2 x2 then a n3 x3 plus dot 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 a n n x n is equal to b n so this is the last one which we may represent as obviously a n j x j is equal to b n where again j runs from 1 to n so this whole set of equations n equations in n unknowns usually denoted as a x equal to b may be represented as 
a column matrix only which is represented by these quantities see we may <laughs> represent it as a i j x j but the repeated index is only summed and that is equal to b i and these two are column matrices actually these matrix may be denoted by this column matrix so with this formalism we move on to uh, rewrite this equation <coughs> in such a way that from the first equation we write the expression of x1 as b1 by a11 minus a12 by a11 x2 a13 by a11 x3 and so on similarly from the second equation we write x2 equal to b2 by a22 minus a21 by a22 x1 a23 by a22 x3 and so on let us <coughs> write it explicitly remembering that we have this equation so in the case of first one i write we write rather x1 equal to <coughs> i think i should make it bold is it visible yes so x1 is equal to nothing but b1 by a11 minus we have a12 by a11 x2 then we have a13 by a11 x3 and so on while the last term becomes a1n xn by a11 similarly from the second one we have x2 equal to b2 by a22 minus obviously we have a21 by a22 and we have x1 because here is x2 and then we have a23 x3 by a22 and so on so that in the last term we have a2n xn by a22 in case of x3 we have obviously b3 by a33 minus a31 by a33 and we have here x1 then we have a32 x2 by a33 and so on so that we have in the last term a3n by xn by a33 so obviously in the last equation we must have xn equal to this goes on according to the symmetry and in the last equation we have bn by ann minus an1 by ann x1 an2 x2 by a n n but in the last term we have we don't have x n in the last term because x n is transposed here so we have the term just before <coughs> x n which is x n minus 1 so we must have here a n minus 1 n x n minus 1 sorry sorry n n minus 1 by a n n a n n minus 1 x n minus 1 by a n n so this is our change structure which we may represent as where can i write uh, i think it is visible here it will be visible here we may represent this set of equation as a column matrix equation which we may write as xi is equal to bi by aii 
minus summation of we say a i j x j by a i i where this j runs from 1 to n but j is not equal to i see <laughs> this is a very vital relation which you should remember in case of <coughs> this iterative scheme since in each and every equation in case of the first one where i is equal to 1 we have a 1 1 here throughout in the denominator and this is b 1 so b i by a i but in this expressions we do not have x 1 because x 1 is transported in the left hand side so we miss a 1 1 here and that is why I have written it as a i j the sum is over j and this j is not equal to i here j is not equal to 1 in the second equation j is not equal to 2 see here x 2 is transport so j is not equal to 2 for this equation and here j is not equal to 3 i runs from 1 2 3 and then n and in the last equation this j is not equal to n so here we have n minus 1 only so this is the iterative scheme in case of gauss side or gauss jacobi iterative form this is the equation this xi is a column this column matrix where i runs from 1 2 3 and n and this sum of j runs from 1 to n where j is not equal to i in case of first equation we have j not equal to 1 second equation we have j not equal to 2 see here a 2 2 is absent here a 3 3 is absent obviously x 3 is absent here x 3 is transposed so this is the form which we may write as the basic <coughs> structural setup in case of the outside iterative method now let me <coughs> write it again like this that we have initially the equation which involves n equations in n unknown n equation in n unknown where a stands for a i j and x and b are two column matrices representing the variable and the constant terms under this scenario under this scenario we just inverted the matrix in terms of x1 x2 x3 xn in such a way that we may write it as xi k plus 1 is equal to bi by ai i minus summation a i j x j and we write it as the upper index k but this j runs from 1 to n but not equal to i see we have <coughs> put an index k here and k plus 1 here so from this initial set of equation we first assume that an approximate solution exists for this all these values we first write it as this is the first equation so we write it as b1 by a11 i am repeating it minus a12 by a11 x2 minus a13 by a11 x3 and so on so that the last term is a1n by a11 xn and obviously 
in the last equation we have a n1 x1 a n2 x2 plus dot 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 a n n x n where we <coughs> have b n in the right hand side and we express this last equation as since we express x n in terms of the other terms so we divide this b n with a n n and obviously here the sum runs from a n 1 by a n n x 1 a n 2 by a n n x 2 and then the term just before x n which is obviously a n n minus 1 x n and when transposed to this side this becomes by a n n so the j index runs from 1 to, to n minus 1 because j is not equal to n here and now we assume a initial approximate value for all these x1 x2 xn as xk and those values are put here to find the improved value xi k plus 1 for each of the variable and this iterative scheme converges only if we have this summation this term mod value a i j by a i i this is less than 1 where j runs from obviously 1 to n and j is obviously not equal to i if at least one or two values for i we have this less than one then the system converges it is preferable that all these values are less than one we represent the equations in that way so that is basically the scheme for gauss jordan or <coughs> gauss jacobi iterative method